As the saying goes, if you want something done right, you might as well do it yourself. And that's exactly what one Deep Racer enthusiast did when he wanted to test his Deep Racer models in the physical world. Greetings, fellow racers. I'm Scott Pletcher, and welcome to a very special episode of Deep Racer, the Fast and the Curious. Today, I'm joined by special guest, Mr. Nick Cool, a true Renaissance man and the mastermind behind A Cloud Guru's very own in house Deep Racer track. Nick was also instrumental in coordinating a Deep Racer meetup in Melbourne and continues to be active in the Deep Racer community online. One thing to note, Mr. Cool is a deeply private person and in order to retain his privacy, we've replaced him with a puppet. Mr. Cool, thank you for joining us today. So what exactly do you do here at A Cloud Guru? Besides looking this cute, I'm one of those people behind the scenery that uh, help instructors make great content. Okay, so you're a bit of a deep racer enthusiast, eh? How did you get started in deep racer? I was always into RC cars and things when I was a little poppet, and I've always wanted to get into machine learning. I just couldn't find the right avenue, and deep racers are a great way to get into it. Um, AWS has made it really easy to get started and still kept it deep enough that there's a lot to learn. Uh, and also what I love about Deep Racer is that there's actual uh, practical, physical implementation of it. So you don't just have to look at things on the screen, you can actually try stuff out, learn some stuff and see how it reacts in the real world. Have you had much success in the league so far? No, 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 next question please. No, Mr. Cool, please. I think the, the public does deserve to know what your qualifications are. Mr. Cool, come back. Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, where am I? Do you have any tips for those preparing for the reInvent finale? Uh, do better than I did at the summits to start with, uh, but expect something new. Uh, we've been racing on the same track for a while now, so I fully expect AWS to pull something out of the bag, something different, so be ready for that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of last minute training to be done on the conference floor, I think. And for anyone new to Deep Racer, the best advice I can give is just give it a shot. It's surprisingly easy to get started and there's a very strong community out there to help you uh, get better. I happen to know you are one of the chief architects of the in-house track here at A Cloud Guru. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so you know, I thought, hey, I've got way too much free time on my hands, so why not start something that's going to consume it all? Uh, so we started building our track at ACG using uh, EVA foam floor tiles as a base. And then we used a whole bunch of paint and masking tape and things to make it look as much like the official track as possible. Uh, at first, we didn't really bother with the barriers on the side, but after, a first, after the first few failures and the first people that got their legs cleaned up by the Deep Racer car, we introduced the barriers as a key component of the track. And for that, we ended up using some blue core flute and a couple of bits of 2x4 to hold it up. I know the vision system plays an important part in the navigation of the track. Did you run into any special situations or conditions that you had to account for in the physical world? Yeah, well, as the car's learning in the virtual environment and everything is perfectly homogenous and the same, we try and replicate that as much as possible in the physical environment. So lighting becomes really important and it's really hard to do on something as large as the track is. And one of the early, like I said, early issues we ran into is without proper barriers, the car gets confused constantly. It would just go for people's legs like a heat-seeking missile. Uh, so the, bar the barriers become really important, lighting becomes really important, and we noticed that a lot where in the early stages we had the car constantly going off track in the same spot. And that spot just happened to be where the lobby was because the lobby was brightly lit up, so the car decided, I'm going to go towards the light. About how much did the track cost all in? Are there any ways that somebody could do it on the cheap? So all up we spent probably about a thousand dollars on our track, but you could very easily do it much cheaper. Uh, and how if you're happy with having a deep racer track in your living room on the floor all the time, even cheaper than we have. Uh, we really wanted something that was portable and that we could break down and put away in the cupboard. So we went with those EVA floor tiles, but you could use something like a vinyl drop sheet instead. Uh, there's even a few people online where you can buy pre-printed tracks uh, for cheaper. Does the track have to have a certain shape? Yeah, so we copied the reInvent racing track because that's what we would be racing on and it's a good idea to practice on 
something as close to the environment you're actually going to be using in the end. But who knows what next year's track's going to be. He's hoping we can at least reuse some of our sections. Also, I know that you've helped organize a Deep Racer event here at A Cloud Guru. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so we had a number of people interested in Deep Racer and thought, hey, why not add some alcohol and make a night of it? I mean, we're not actually driving the car, so where's the problem with that? <laughs> Um, it's very different from other types of meetups because it's pretty interactive and there's a large physical component. So there's quite a lot more effort to organize and run. Uh, you need a lot more volunteers, people to log track times, give talks, and most importantly, uh, a rotating roster of very fit people to chase the car around the track. Uh, in the end, with a lot of our friends from AWS and NAB, we had a good evening, I think, and everyone had a good time. For those out there that might want to host their own meetups or events, do you have any tips for them? Uh, this is one of those few meetup types that has a really strong physical component, so you need to highlight that. Get people on track as much as possible. It's all about the racing, so stay away from long, drawn-out presentations. Maybe run a breakout session or two to help people get started, provide some tips and tricks but it's really all about the racing. So less talky talky, more racy racy. It seems like the Deep Racer League is going to be returning for a second season. What hopes and fears do you have about that second season? I'd love to see the ability to build our own tracks and share them with the community uh, and run our own leagues. Maybe give us a chance to actually win. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cool, for your time and insight today. Good luck on all your future endeavors. Well, my pleasure, Scott. Thank you for joining us on this very special Deep Racer, the Fast and the Curious episode. Next up for us is an all out push for Deep Racer Glory at reInvent as A Cloud Guru has managed to land not one but two competitors on the overall leaderboard, our very own Ryan Krunenberg and yours truly. As Deep Racer season is winding down, so too is the series. But we have one last star studded episode in which we'll be recording at reInvent and of course there's no telling what mayhem may ensue. If you're headed to reInvent, I definitely hope to see you there and be sure to stop by the A-Cloud Guru booth and meet Ryan, myself, and all the other gurus. Until next time, keep learning and keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.